Hello again! Today we are going to make leggings like we made the protective shirt. Uh, right now I'm showing the difference between a pair of leggings that I drafted a while ago and the ones I printed off from Danny Chu's website for Smart Dolls. Um, <laughs> I noticed there was a lot of differences. Mine is so much longer and wider. I went with mine and I cut it out of my fabric and I did find out eventually, uh, spoilers, that there is a reason that there was a difference. Um, but for now, we try it out. It's the same stretchy fabric I used for the shirt. I just kind of showed that off. Now, I had considered trying to sew these together in a different order than I'm used to, so as to why I'm lining it up. I eventually just went with the method that I'm used to, because it makes sense in my head, and I think pants it's always like, find the way that makes sense in your head and go. Um, right now you see me lining it up and I realized that the first attempt was wrong. Uh, you want them to be mirror images of each other, so you saw me flip it back the other way. Now, I always set them up and pin them first before sewing because it's so easy to accidentally bake two right sides, uh, which is obviously not what we want to do. And then I just pin them, and we will sew from essentially the crotch to the tip of the foot. And I tried it on and discovered that, yeah, that's really long uh, and it's too wide. So I tried getting it all the way up, you know, making sure that it's sitting absolutely correct, but still that's like a good inch, inch and a half. Like that's insane. Uh, I realized the reason for that is when I drafted this pattern, the fabric that I was using was very different. This fabric stretches in basically every single direction. The fabric that I originally made my leggings out of only stretched in one direction, which of course I made the width because I wanted them to be able to stretch around her legs and stay tight. Well, the ability to stretch vertically as well makes a huge difference. But you can see I'm trying to pin out all of the extra material, um, even though it did stretch widthwise the old fabric, I think it was not as stretchy as this stuff. So we pin it out, we find out exactly how much we need to take out, take her off, and run her through the machine again. Here I'm comparing with this pattern to be like, hmm. Hmm. It's kind of funny as this video progresses, my pattern becomes so much more like his. <laughs> Clearly he knows what he's doing. Now you see I'm, I'm making essentially my notes, like I want to make sure that I can duplicate this, so I just mark where I was bringing it in and we'll finish adjusting the pattern pieces when we're done and we know for sure this is the direction we want to go. And there's the new sewn seam. Really fits. There's a little bit of issue with the toe kind of not sitting the way I wanted so I just went back a second time. You can see I made the toe a little bit more pointed. Then we want to cut off all that extra fabric that we don't need because that just bulks things up and looks bad.
And you can see I accidentally uh, must have ran that through under under the sewing machine. So instead of you know popping a whole seam to take it out, I just trimmed it down. It was a small enough piece of fabric I could get away with it. Now we need to sew the crotch seam essentially. So we're gonna turn the one leg inside out. It really doesn't matter which leg as long as uh, you make sure to put the, the one that you just turned inside out, you want to stuff inside the other one. So you see I roll it up a little bit stick it in the end and then the crotch seams should line up exactly and you essentially have right side to right side it just gets a little complicated because you got to figure out where to put all that extra legging material but you want to make sure that the butt side of the crotch seam is matching up with the butt side of the crotch seam of your other piece uh, and they should line up exactly because they're exactly the same cut and length so if they don't line up pull it apart try again now that we've sewn that we leave the one you know it's right side out right side out and then the inside out one we're gonna turn and we have essentially a functional pair of leggings I'm gonna try them on her and I really seriously debated not finishing the top because I liked how flat it laid but I ended up deciding that it was long enough, I had all the extra fabric, I should turn it. I didn't even need to put elastic in it though because this material is just so stretchy. But you can see, they're nice. Uh, I made the top on mine way longer, I prefer that. And you can see the little shirt fits right over top of it. One of the reasons I decided to turn the edge was because it was covering up her stand hole in the back there, on her lower back, and I do like to be able to use that little tripod stand every now and then, so I'm just kind of debating how much I want to turn that over before I go. I was questioning and the end results fit they were okay but I did decide to make them a little bit wider still so you could see me move my notes and then finish sketching out the new lines I'm still debating if I wanted to sew down the waist and I ended up doing it and it ended up looking great so no regrets there and since I kind of hoard my patterns Rather than cutting down the existing pattern, I decided to trace over it. Um, it's hard to see with the camera, but I could actually see through the paper pretty easily, so that's why I'm not just freehanding it right now. <laughs> okay, well I guess this part I was kind of freehanding, just cutting off the same amount on that side as I was on the other side. Those are my lines so that I know I can uh, line this all up when I tape it together so that I have all one piece. It's always good to give yourself at least three. Uh, that way you know that your page didn't get crooked when you finally tape it down later. I 
did that because I couldn't see through the two pages. I could only ever see through the one. And we cut out our new pattern piece and make sure we label it. Um, I am bad about labeling sometimes and oh boy does that bite you in the butt. It, uh, it's a really good idea to get in the habit of labeling, labeling every single pattern piece even if you're like, I know I'm going to remember this. I guarantee you, you probably will not. Just write it down quick. There's plenty of room on most pattern pieces. Um, until you get into like the monster high size, those are pretty teeny, but it's still worth labeling them. Here you get to see just how similar my pattern piece ended up becoming to his. Uh, the waistband is definitely quite a bit different, but the legs actually almost exactly the same. I thought that was pretty funny. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Please like and subscribe. Um, just about to run out of time here, so you have a great week.